Hi everybody. It's day nine after my mastectomy and I wanted to come and do a video um, specifically to talk about the past nine days and to share a little bit about what the pain has been like and some of the ways that I have found to manage a little bit easier or things that have really helped me so that people who are having to do this in the future will have a better idea of some things that they can try starting out. So I want to talk a little bit about the last week and the pain that I have experienced. So Saturday was definitely my worst day. So I had surgery on Friday. So then Saturday we drove home and I was just really physically uncomfortable. Um, I had two drains on each side. So four drains total. And that was awkward and uncomfortable to figure out how to use and also how to make those, you know, not get in the way when you're trying to sleep and this, that, or the other. Um, also, because of the where my scars are, I, you of course have to basically sleep on your back. As I think it went along a little bit more, I was able to slightly adjust my sleep and sleep a little bit on my side. Um, but I did find a system that worked for me for sleep, which I will share with you. The pain is, it's a discomfort. If I had to rate it on a scale of zero to 10, I don't think that I would ever say it was above a five. It feels like pressure. You know, I no longer have any feeling in my chest. So if I touch my chest, I can feel pressure, but I don't feel a sensation. So I was really nervous that there was going to be a lot of pain at the incision sites. There is none of that. I even had an incision under my um, right armpit where they did um, some checking around my lymph nodes that I didn't even know that I have. So there is not a deep, um, intense pain. It is more like a dull um a dull sensation of discomfort is what I would say. Um, so, and maybe, uh, and a lot, not going to say maybe, a lot of muscle soreness. What I found for me was that my back and shoulder muscles in response to the trauma in my chest started really, really tightening up. And I was so uncomfortable. By about day three, I had figured out some things like my heating pad on my back <laughs> and up in through my shoulders and then also laying flat on my yoga mat and pulling my knees up as I can and kind of doing a rock back and forth, not back and forth, side to side. Back and forth required too much like pulling this way, but to rock back and forth side to side. And then I even laid my heating mat, my heating pad down on my yoga mat and would lay on top of that and just rock side to side. And that really helped ease up some of that tension that was in my back and made me feel better um, just in general, not so tense, which also decreased the pain in my chest reason, region because I felt like everything wasn't pulling so tightly. So that was Saturday. Saturday I came home, I slept, and Sunday, two days after surgery, I woke up and I felt really well rested, really good. Now, um, I'm assuming that I had enough anesthesia in me that I just kind of slept all day on Saturday because come Sunday, sleep started to get really difficult. Um, and nothing, I was taking some things for sleep. Um, I was on a pain pill and then they have prescribed Trazodone for me, 50 milligrams for sleep, and also have access, of course, to Unisom or Melatonin. Um, I tried kind of an array of things and nothing worked. And so Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, I was sleeping about 30 minutes, and then I would be up. And then I would try to wheel myself back to sleep, frustrate myself back to sleep, 
um, pray myself back to sleep, all the things, and really nothing worked. That first night, I was really frustrated about it and pretty emotional in my own mind. Um, and then I stepped back a little bit and one of the most helpful things that I think I did to endure the next about two days of not sleeping was to really remind myself my body experienced a trauma and it's hurting and it's doing its very very best and if I can't sleep that's I don't being angry at myself or being angry about the situation is only gonna make me feel worse so having sort of said that to myself out loud then when I would wake up in a start because for me I would sleep and I would start sweating even with my you know really fabulous blowy fan and then I would dream. Dreaming was really bad. And, and then I would wake up in a start and my heart would be beating really fast. And so I got into the habit of just saying, Kayla, you're okay. And then I would get up for me because laying in the bed and, and sort of staring at the wall made me feel more frustrated. So I would get up and come to my handy dandy recliner, which is where I am at today, and make a hot tea which I just kind of did in my Keurig. Um, our coffee cups are high, so pay attention to your surroundings. So my husband would always keep some coffee cups down on the counter for me um, because you're not, it's not real easy to reach up into a cabinet. Um, but so I had to have some hot tea, um, have my book. This is my new one, but you know, um, I had another one that I was reading and and finishing and just had some things here at my little station, as I called it, um, that I could just sit and do. And then maybe I would fall asleep for 20, 30 minutes here. Um, so I did that for about three days. I also had my handy dandy. I don't know where it's at. Um, I had an eye mask that I put he here at my station because it was really helpful if I could feel myself getting sleepy, um, it was really helpful for me to cover my eyes and just to be able to sleep in the recliner. So by Wednesday though, I was sleeping in the bed and my pain continued to go less. So my pain on Sunday, um, I mean, it's really, it, it was in, in that probably five range. I stopped taking the pain pill that they had prescribed me on, sun, on Sunday and then moved into just a Tylenol ibuprofen rotation that my doctor gave me that I followed really um, pretty strictly. So one of the things that helped me with my regimen is to, I had this notebook. I also have like a little pad with a clip because this was handy to keep all of this together. And I wrote out, okay, I took ibuprofen at 6 a.m. And then I would write out for the day, 12 p.m., 6 p.m., 12 a.m. That's when I can take my ibuprofen. And then I'd come in with my Tylenol and I would do it, you know, um, 9 a.m. I don't have that one written out here. But so, like, and I can't do math that fast in my head. So, 9, 3, 9, that sort of thing. So, um... This was helpful for me. So every time I took my medicine, I notated the time and then I notated when the next time was that I could take it. I attempted to keep all this in the memory and it was too much. So I was really thankful that I wrote my medicine down and tracked it every single day. The other thing that I did was I bought some of these little 97 cent pill containers at Walmart or wherever you want to get yours. And I took a dry erase marker and wrote, you know, you could just, I could change them every day. And I wrote the time and I'd put like my ibuprofen and my Tylenol, my ibuprofen and my Tylenol. That way I could keep up with it much easier without forgetting or having to get up and go get medicine. And I just tried to fill this up or Ryan tried to fill this up once a day. And so that also 
really helped that with my notebook of just tracking the times helped me stay on top of my um, medicine regimen which really helped my pain when I had the ibuprofen for me ibuprofen works better than Tylenol um, but you, you had to switch out so I did that on all day Sunday and all day Monday by Tuesday I'm really and, and kind of where I am now, I'm really just taking ibuprofen every six hours. And the pain is manageable. Really manageable. The one thing that, there's tenderness, so the expanders that they have placed in for reconstruction, um, the edges of it are sort of stretching on your skin a little bit and they make your skin tender to the touch. And that is also the thing that I think creates the most discomfort. If it wasn't the edges of that expander, I don't know that I would be in much discomfort at all. Um, so for me, that's what the pain experience has been. So that has been where my pain is. Very manageable. Here's another thing that helps. This is a mas mastectomy pillow that my friend sent me. It has little pockets that you can put a book in. Um, some people, you know, say they may put ice in this. I did ask my doctor about that and because I've lost my sensation in my chest and my ability to feel because my nerve endings are gone, they did not recommend, recommend heat or ice because you can't really tell if you're putting too much on your skin. Um, but this pillow, it kind of wraps around and has a place for your arms. One of the things that I noticed at night when I tried to sleep was that I wanted to put my hands here and this pillow has really decreased the pain that happens for me. Once I was like, oh, let me try out that pillow. <laughs> it really helped me. You also can sort of push this kind of behind you and you can lean into it as you sleep on your pillow and it, and it sort of tilts your body so you're not completely on your back. I wear this thing all the time. I take it with me if I'm riding in the car, because riding in the car, even with a smooth ride vehicle, to me has been the most difficult thing because when you just hit pavement, it just kind of jars you a little bit. But so this mastectomy pillow is a godsend. Here is the brand that my friend sent me. Um, I will post some links for this in my newsfeed. Okay. I stole this from my husband. It is from back in the day when he, oh, I hit myself. Back in the day when he was a police officer, it was his little, I don't know, pad. But it's just a little clipboard with some holders in the back. In, in the back here, I have, I put all of my post-op instructions so that if I'm in the bathroom or if I'm worried about something like I knew, everything was together and I kept all of this stuff together. Um, this is where I would track all of the output of my drains, which you're, I'm having to do twice a day. So I have done a couple things that have make, made that easier. The first thing is they give you this specimen collector to collect your daily drainage, which you have to do twice a day or maybe more. Um, because they're really looking, in order to get my drains out, I had to be less than 30 cc's for two 24-hour periods in each drain. So I was at that for two of my drains. Um, I got two of my drains removed on Wednesday because they were less than 30 cc's for a 48-hour span of time. And so I still have two left and I am on day nine. And this morning, um, my left drain was at 20 cc's and my right drain was at 35 cc's. So I'm still not going to be under that just yet. So about nine days out, I'm still producing. Yesterday, I produced 75 cc's in my, um, 75 cc's in my right drain and 60 cc's in my left drain. And I have learned that a 30 cc's is equal to one ounce, if that can kind of put in there. So here is the most helpful thing that I did. They give you this thing that has all of these clear readings 
And if you have great eyes like my husband, you can read this. But you will love yourself if you will take a fine point permanent marker and just outline. I outline the 20, 30, 40, and 50 because I've not had any more output so that when I collect my specimen, I can see a little bit easier where I'm at because otherwise I'm all like, how much is that? So that was helpful with that. The other thing, my doctor gave me these and then I ordered some more on Amazon. They're bandages, 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters or four inches by four inches. They're called Mepilex Border Flex. What I love about these things is they do not hurt when you have to peel them off. I have them here. Um, let's see covering my drain, but they really have soft borders because even though you can't necessarily feel the pain, you can feel the skin tension. And so not having to, having these um, soft pull things were really, really helpful. There were, I think, $20 on Amazon for quite a big box. My doctor's office gave me this. So I hope your doctor's office gives you this. And what I use this for is for showering. So this is my drain. And um, kind of put it through here. And I put it through both of mine. Ryan taught me this because he's brilliant. Because I would have tried to make it more difficult. And you just do this. And then you put this above over your neck and you can shower and your drains will just hang here in front of you. And so that's something that really made showering easy for me. The other thing that has made life intensely so much better. So the hospital gave me a drain apron that tied around your waist and I wore it for the first two days and I really struggled with it because it kept coming untied and I'd wake up and need to go to the bathroom and then I'd like wake up and my drains would fall and that it was a disaster. Okay, Now I do appreciate that you gave me that hospital but my sister-in-law, I think maybe her mom made her this, I'm not sure but I did do some checking and Amazon sells not, not any this cute, okay? But I'm gonna tell you what makes all the difference. If I can get them untangled here. This snaps. And then you can adjust it around your waist. So you can wake up in the middle of the night and it's not going to fall off. It's not going to get caught and tangled having the this snap so it's not tied it's not coming loose has been the most helpful thing in regards to managing my drains so i will put a couple options in the notes because if i could say purchase one item it would be that so i'm pretty sure i have went through Water bottle, you may as well get all the use out of the one that they give you at the hospital. Be drinking water. I have a little bit of flavoring in mine so it makes it so that I want to drink more of it. Um, those are all the things that I'm using. The only thing that I don't have here that my friend also sent me is a seat belt cover. I thought, oh, I'll just use this pillow, and I did for a couple days, but once I installed the seatbelt cover, it's just a really, really soft um, cover that lays between your chest and the seatbelt. That helps tremendously, so you'll also want to purchase one of those. Um, the other things, big, bulky clothes. I am not wearing, for the first couple days, I wore button, and by Monday, I was just wearing my husband's extra large shirts. Put them over my head and you can kind of stick your arms out and it works really well. But so, so today for me is Sunday. It's about, it's not about, it's nine days after my surgery. 
I've got good movement. Um, not a lot of pain. I have two of my four drains out, but I anticipate that I'll have these drains for a little while just because my numbers continue to be, I mean, really higher than they, um, I shouldn't say, maybe this is, I don't know if this is what to expect, um, but I was really hopeful like I could be such a great patient that by day seven, I could have all my drains out. I think that's probably unrealistic. Um, I've been walking every day. I started that on Sunday as well. I mean, slow walking because walking is another thing. Any, anything that you're doing on uneven surface that, ha you know, you have a tendency to jar your body because you, nothing holds your chest in place right now. As long as you have your drains in, you can't wear um, the medical bra that they're going to be giving you. So anything like walking, driving, it's just has a tendency to be tender. So, I mean, I bet I started by walking less than a fourth of a mile and I walk really, really slow. But that has helped me, I feel like, to decrease the body tension. The other thing, when sleep was difficult that I was doing um, and also helped me reduce my tension was progressive muscle relaxation. And I'll try to remember and put a link for that in um, the notes as well. So all in all, at day nine, my pain is really manageable. I'm down to just taking six, um, not six, I'm down to taking just ibuprofen. Oh, 600 milligrams is kind of where I'm at. Um, for me personally, I was taking um, the maximum dose that they told me, which was 800, um, but I am down to 600 today. The pain is manageable. Sleep is getting a little bit better. I am elevating myself on two pillows. Oh, I'll show you guys my handy dandy sleep. So I'm elevated. I'm on two pillows. Then I have found for me that sleeping on my back has improved when I take this really soft blanket and whichever direction I'm going to sleep. I'll do it on this side because it's easier. I just kind of fold this double here and I can sleep like this. This is how I have found in my bed, sleeping in this chair. If I just use this blanket for kind of a pillow, I can. It's just a good angle when I'm that propped up. So, these are all my tips and trips or tips and tricks that I have learned to sort of make it through the past nine days. The other thing that I have done um, is I asked at the very beginning of this to for help covering meals. And someone has delivered us a amazing meal every day. And then we have a lot of DoorDash gift cards that we have used for, you know, maybe other meals of the day. Um, not gonna lie, I've been ordering some Dairy Queen, a good banana split blizzard is where it's at. But doing that has been so, so helpful to me. I have not had to think about food at all. And it has all been just so feeling and so good not to have to worry about that. So please think about, because people are going to want to help you. People are going to text you and call you and say, oh my gosh, what do you need? And you normally say, oh, I'll just let you know. I'm telling you, ask for food. <laughs> and you think about your individual circumstances and ask for whatever it is that you know you'll need and you'll know you'll use. People want to help you because they love you and they care about you. So I hope you have a wonderful week. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Bye.